pictures, and we're going to read this story, The Ugly Duckling. But before we get to that, I'll ask you some questions and tell you a story. So if I show you this picture, um, you probably know who this is. Who is this? Yeah, this is Audrey Hepburn. And then why is she famous? Uh, uh huh. She's famous for volunteering. And then why else is she famous? Really, even in Wang Shimni, I don't know if it's still there, but a few years ago, Wang Shimni exit six, there's Audrey Hepburn hair shop. Is it still there? Really, it's still there. I can't believe it's still there. So uh, she's famous for volunteering, but she was an actress before that. Why was she a successful actress? She's pretty. Yeah, she's pretty. She's famous for being beautiful, especially in her prime. She's very nice looking. Um, here's a... This other one, this lady is not famous, but she's very famous. Uh, who's this woman? Yeah, thank you. Sampungi Ajuma, that's right. So um, what's her story? Does anybody know her story? She's addicted to making things. Yeah, okay. So she, she used to be kind of nice, normal looking, and then she had some kind of like addiction to plastic surgery. So uh, what did she do? to herself to cause this problem. Does anybody know the story? She injected mm -hmm. oil to her face. That's right. So she said, my face is a little bit thin here. So she got a shot for an injection, filled it with vegetable oil, and then injected her face. Maybe she had some allergy or she did it the wrong way. The needle was dirty, but she had a severe reaction. Now, actually, she looks pretty good. A couple years ago, she looked much worse than this, if you can believe it. So, um, I don't know. Does anybody else think this is fake? Did that idea ever cross your face? Cross your mind? Sorry. No? You think it's real? It's just so strange. And then this lady, uh, Kim Ogim, does anybody know her story? I never heard of her before I saw this picture. No? Okay. So, uh, here's uh, talking about this one. And there's a... Uh, a big, uh, a big fat guy in a diaper. Um, uh, I, don't, I just found this on the internet. And uh, uh, no comment. It's just a little bit disturbing. Not only disgusting, but what is up with this? It's a, hopefully, it's a costume. And there was one more picture. OK. And uh, next, thank you. OK. And did he ask for money? No. No, good, good. OK, he should know. We have him trained by now. And uh, who's this guy? Yeah, this is George Clooney. And uh, why is George Clooney famous? Yeah, he's handsome. So actually, there's some debate about George Clooney. Um, let's ask the uh, women in the class, who likes George Clooney? Who likes him? Really? Wow. And who dislikes him? Nobody? Everybody likes him? My wife says, oh, he's very handsome, but... He's very greasy and oily, so I don't know. It's hard for me to judge. So today we're going to talk about the story, uh, The Ugly Duckling. And you probably read this when you were a kid, but uh, today we'll pass this one out and we'll... Uh, I'll put the questions up here, but today I'll give you the same questions on the paper. So here I have uh, one, two... How did we get six? I don't know. This is uh, two pages in one. So this is before we read the story. This is after. So your paper, you can just fold it over and only look at the pre-reading questions first because about this one. So here there are some questions you want to... First, I'll give you about five minutes, ten minutes. Answer the questions on your own. Maybe make some little notes. And then you can talk about it after that. So if we read these questions... Um, these ones are kind of, uh, the first two are idioms in English. They have a special meaning um, than this one. So what do these mean? Do you understand what the meaning is? And then we have what is ugliness and what is beauty? And then here, yeah, I can talk about something like physical ugliness, physical beauty, a beautiful girl, handsome guy like this one. But there's also emotional ugliness, emotional beauty, spiritual ugliness, spiritual beauty, um, political ugliness, po 
political beauty. And then uh, political ugliness, it sounds like a strange concept. Maybe here I'm talking about people working together, uh, people believing in each other, helping. That would be political beauty, political ugliness. Sometimes this happens where two parties, they actually fight each other, they can't get along, uh, they actually attack each other. That's not so nice. And then environmental ugliness, environmental beauty. So you can, what is the meaning of each of these? And maybe write a couple examples. Um, when have you felt ugly? So this one, like I told you that story about my high school life. In high school, I was not one of the popular kids. I felt ugly. So maybe physically, I was not ugly. I felt different or unpopular. So maybe I was not ugly on the outside. Uh, I felt a little bit different, like I didn't belong. Um, let me tell you the story. Uh, my son started elementary school about six months ago. So sometimes in the afternoon, I walk to his school, I pick him up, and we go home together. And it's a little bit funny because I'm very different. Um, at least I think in Korea this is typical. They say, Hakpumo, uh, the people who pick up their kids are 99% female and 99% mothers. So when I pick up my son first, I'm a man. And second, I'm a foreign guy, so I look quite different. And uh, when I go to pick up my son, all the mothers, they get together and they talk, 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 oh my God, they talk so much. And then when I go to pick up my son, I just go, I wait. And a few mothers, maybe one or two ladies, they say, that's it. No conversation, no questions, nothing. And I just wait quietly for my son. Then they go back to their friends, talk, 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 talk. And every time it's the same. And I say, wait, 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 why don't you talk to me? Uh, I don't have to talk, I can listen. Why don't we have a conversation? But they just greet me and then they go back and talk, 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 talk. And I feel like, hey, what's wrong with me? Am I a criminal? Am I a bad person? Am I discussing? Uh, why don't you talk to me? Why not? What's wrong? I'm not a dangerous criminal. And then I thought, oh, because I'm a foreigner, they don't want to talk to me. Oh, it's an English thing. Oh, I understand. But also there's a grandfather, a student grandfather, and the ladies, they don't talk to him either. Uh, so there's male thing and female thing, and I don't understand. I think it's Korean culture because you say chil se bu. What is the idiom? Yeah, the, I think uh, in the, where I'm from, that's not so serious. But here, it's amazing. Women go here, men go here, completely separate. And still, I don't understand. So they're not bad people, but that's just their style. That's just their culture. So I feel like, ah, I just want my wife. Oh, you pick up my son. Uh, you do it. You take him to school. Oh, I don't want to deal with it. So I feel ugly. I feel like there's some problem with me, although really I don't think it's me. Um, and the other way, how many ways can you pronounce the following? He's different, she's different. And what I mean is, if I say it this way, oh, uh, he, he's different. Um, that's one way I can say it. But if I say it this way, she's, she's different. Like this one, uh, if I say it like this one, the feeling is very different between the two things. So it depends on your pronunciation, your accent. How do you say it? And uh, <clears throat> the last of these, how are you different from other people? How are you the same as everyone else? So for me, I feel different from other people. But on the other hand, in some other ways, I'm very typical. Uh, I'm a typical 40-year-old guy, same thinking. So everybody has differences. Everybody has similarities. So what we'll do is you have your paper. Just do the pre-reading questions. First, by yourself, look it over, spend about five minutes, uh, make some notes. And don't talk to each other yet, but just write, um, just make some simple notes to answer the questions. So today we're going to read the story of the ugly duckling, talk about it before the story, and then discuss it after we finish. 
Yeah, so um, here I said uh, for question number two, write a definition and then provide examples. So I don't mean like a handsome guy. I mean like what is the name of somebody who's handsome or a place that's beautiful. So if I want to say a beautiful place, I might say, for example, Wangshimni, of course, and for an ugly place, Sungyungwan University campus, something like this one. So when I say provide examples, real places, places you've been, places you've seen, uh, people, uh, maybe not people you know in the class, uh, but maybe actresses, something like that. So think of real places, real people, real situations. Man, so when I say beauty, I can mean beautiful or handsome, male or female, it doesn't matter. So don't think only about female, male as well. Um, for, for women, guys might be beautiful, so masculine or feminine beauty, you don't have to limit to only women, that wouldn't be fair. Okay, so um, to make some notes about the questions, are you ready to talk or do you need a little bit more time? You guys are ready? Okay, so what we'll do is uh, just to uh, ease the atmosphere, we'll put some music in the background and just spend about five, ten minutes talking to answer the questions uh, before we read the Ugly Duckling. Oh, I see, okay, sure. Oh, that's very deep. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Oh, okay, yeah, that's good. So you got the first one. And then um, this one, beauty in the eye of the beholder, that's kind of an idiom. Do you have the same idiom in Korean or similar idiom? Mm -hmm. Which means that everybody has a different idea thinking about beauty. Or not really, not in an idiom. You can explain it, of course, but there's no special idiom or phrase for that. Not really? Really? That's interesting, because some idioms translate perfectly. So if I said, uh, to kill two birds with one stone, there's a perfect idiom translation, but not this one. Hmm, okay. So you said you have a couple examples of guys that you like, and they're more cute style. So cute as in um, not exactly handsome, but more cute looking. They're handsome and cute, but um, they have kind of a different quality. So for example, we're talking about George Clooney. People say he's handsome but not cute, but these handsome cute guys, how are they different? So, um, what's the difference between just handsome and the guys that you like handsome, cute, the shape of the face or their height or how are they different in their behavior? Hmm? How, they act. how they act. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, so their character is a little bit different. So how are the cute guys, how are they different? How do they behave differently from just a handsome guy? Oh, I see. Okay, so it's more their behavior than their appearance that makes them cute. Oh, that's interesting. A little bit softer. Oh, okay, that's interesting. No, I don't, I don't know these guys. Okay. From a long time ago, from any story, or there's many okdongjas. But you said okdongja is ugly. Every okdongja? The, oh, right, yeah, the little guy who did the ice cream, he has the kind of bull haircut. Oh, okay. And is he on, like, the gag show? But uh, the character is okdongja. Who's the name? Who's the actor? Right, so okay, he's kind of short and faces now. Oh, okay, yeah, I, that's what I th was thinking. Oktongja. Oh, yeah. Okay, so uh, <coughs> we'll 
we'll, uh, we'll move on here and talk about some of the things. Then we'll watch uh, the video. So here we're talking about uh, uh, reading for children. And then uh, later, when you have a child, uh, reading for a kid is one of the most enjoyable, happy things you can do. It's really nice. And then also, uh, at least for me, it's kind of like therapy. If you had something bad that happened or had a bad day, reading a story is usually pretty nice. Um, and then also, if you had some bad childhood memories, sometimes rereading the story, it makes you a little bit happier. For my son, there's two stories that I cannot read, though. And this is the most famous one. Uh, do you know the story of the giving tree? Oh, God, this story is too sad. If I try to read the story to my son, oh, I'll be in tears, I'll be crying. Even just, even just from page one, um, oh, oh, my God, oh, the tree, oh, the poor tree, he cut down the tree. Dad, what's wrong with you? Oh, it's too sad. Oh, uh, So oh, I can't read the giving tree, and I think this story... See, I think we have one of those stories in here. It's Gis, yeah, the one with the two rabbits. Yeah, okay, yeah, this one. Oh, geez, God. Um, this one, this is another one. We can read it in this class, but this one, I could never read this to my son because the same thing. Oh, I'll be in tears even after the first page. Oh, guess how much? I, oh, God, oh, it's just, it's too much. It's too much for me to handle. So reading for kids is nice. I can't read everything, but most stories are actually pretty good. Um, not the chocolate war. That's not so good for uh, reading. So um, what we'll do is we'll watch the story, and then we'll take a little break, then we'll read it, and we'll talk about it a little bit more. Is this stupid thing going to turn on? Yeah. So I'll describe, <coughs> excuse me, a story or a character. If you know the answer, I'll give you one candy. Uh, I have some Emart candy and some good candy mixed in there today, so the, the stakes are a little bit higher. So um, this is uh, one of the most famous children's stories. What happens is there's a prince, but it gets turned into kind of an ugly animal. And then he's rescued by the princess in the end. She kisses him. And it's one of the best children's stories. What, so what story is it? The Frog Prince. It's similar. Actually, actually, you know what? They're almost the same. So, it's, okay, that's not Emark Candy. So it's similar to the Frog Prince, but a little bit different. Yeah, that's Beauty and the Beast. That's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, do you want to? Okay, this is Emart. Sorry, it's just by chance, I swear. This is uh, blueberry scented candy. And then... Um, in, there's a story of two brothers. It's a Korean story. Um, there's the older brother is a nasty guy. The younger brother is very nice. It's Hungbu and Nolbu. And then in the story, Hungbu is very hungry. His children are hungry. He says to Nolbu's wife, please just give me a little barley rice. But then she does something bad. What does Nolbu's wife do to Hungbu when he asks for some rice? She, she had her hand up, uh-huh. She hits him. She hits him. Very good. Okay, good. So she hits him. Okay. And this is at random. Okay. Oh, polo. Ah, it's not so good. Sorry. Okay. And then the important thing is she hits him with something for cooking. It's not a knife or a fork. What does she hit him with? Uh, yeah, rice spoon or rice scoop. That's right. And at random, I'm choosing at random. Okay, I don't know what it is. Okay, that's not bad. Oh, sorry. Okay. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. And then, um, and then what happens is there's uh, a bird that drops the seed. What kind of bird is it? It's a swallow. That's a, is it a swallow or a sparrow? I think you're right. It's a swallow. And at random. Okay, good. And then... Um, what happens is the seed gets dropped and some corn, a big vegetable grows. Um, what vegetable or fruit is that? It's like a pumpkin. That's right, yeah. Uh, so who said it, I think? Uh -huh. You said it in Korean. So, okay, Pak, that's right. Ooh, okay. And uh, these, are, these candies are from Costco. They're really cute. They look like monsters, but... 
taste like? Uh, not so good, okay. So they're cute. Um, so does anybody know the name of this vegetable? Usually we translate it as a gourd. Some are small, some are big like this one, but um, that's uh, okay. And we'll talk about uh, two more children's stories. Um, there's a story of uh, Kyonu and Jingya, two lovers. What happens is uh, they got separated, they got split up. They could only meet each other once a year. How can they meet each other? They don't take the subway. How do the two get to meet each other? Words make or bridge and mm -hmm. That's right, okay, so the birds, the birds make a bridge. Ooh, okay. Okay, and um, what day is that? They meet one day every year. What year is it that, uh, I'm sorry, what day of the year can Kyonu and Jingya meet? July 7th. July 7th, okay, good. And then, okay, trying to get, get a good one for you, that was good. Okay, it's, not, it's peanut candy. Do you have a peanut allergy? No? Okay, good. And then, um, so the question is, that's, you said 7-7, seven, seven, July 7th? Seven? Is that the uh, solar calendar or lunar calendar? Lunar, lunar calendar. Okay, good. Uh, who, you said it? Lunar. Okay, he's got it. He's the only one who raised his hand. Okay, and uh, what is this? Keroro. Keroro candy. It's a vitamin or candy. I don't even know. And um, finally, this story we're going to watch in a minute. The story in the ugly duckling. He thinks he's an ugly duckling. In the end, he's not. What kind of bird is the ugly duckling? Yeah. Oh, were you just stretching? Okay. So he's not a duckling. He's a swan. Swan. That's right. So a swan. So I heard it. Okay. And okay. Ooh, uh, Godiva. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Good. So it wasn't on purpose. It was just by random. So we'll watch this story before we take a break. Yeah. It's only like five minutes. So first we'll watch, and then so um, we can hit the lights, and then we'll watch the short story. She was excited. Her five eggs were finally going to hatch. She watched and counted as one by one the eggs hatched. One duckling, two duckings, and four five ducklings. She said happily. Suddenly she noticed that there was one more egg. It was bigger and whiter than the rest. This cannot be my egg, she thought. Slowly, the big egg began to crack and a strange looking duckling came out. Mother duck was surprised. The youngest duckling was grey and bigger than the rest. How ugly this little one is, she thought. As the days went by, the ducklings began to grow. But the youngest duckling looked different from the rest. Everybody looked at him and said, There goes the ugly duckling. His brothers and sisters teased him all the time. The ugly duckling felt very bad. Whenever people laughed at him, he used to run away and hide behind the weeds near the lake. Nobody loves me, he said. One day, the duckling decided to run away from home. He swam and he swam, and on the way he had many ventures. In the woods, hunters tried to shoot him, but he ran away from them and their dogs. He had never been so scared. He escaped to an old woman's hut, but when she found out that he couldn't lay any eggs for her, she shot him out. The duckling lived for some time near another lake, but winter came and soon the water in the lake became ice. The duckling shivered and shook in the freezing cold. He was rescued by a kind farmer. But the farmer's naughty son chased him all around and threw stones at him. He ran away from there too, squawking in fear and pain. The duckling was tired from all its travels, but he trudged on with a heavy heart. 
<coughs> Finally, down in spring, he reached a shimmering lake. There he saw two beautiful white birds with long necks swimming gracefully on the water. Just then, he looked into the water at his reflection. To his surprise, he saw that he looked just like the other two elegant birds. The birds came up to him and said, Welcome, young friend. You must be the most beautiful swan in this whole lake. This was then he realized who he really was. The ugly duckling had become a beautiful swan. Okay, um, so we kind of got the idea. So, where is it? Okay, um, so let's take a five minute break and then we'll read it and talk about it. So five minutes. Right, so that's been about five minutes. So we'll um, go and read the story. Um, we can turn on this light here and a couple, uh, there you go, um, there you go. Okay, so a couple of words from the story are the word peck. Peck means a couple of things in English. Birds, when they eat something, they peck like this one, peck. And also, uh, a peck is a kiss on the cheek. So um, if somebody gives you a peck, it's just this little kiss on the cheek, like in South America. So peck, like this one. And then leg behind, it means the leader is in front. Other people are going very slowly. They can't catch up. So leg behind, following very slowly. And then cackle, it's a laugh but it's very obnoxious, so <laughs> like this one, that's cackling, an obnoxious, annoying laugh. It's very negative to have a cackle, <laughs> yeah, like this one. And then drag on, it means something, it's going too slowly, so maybe your class, not this class, ha 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 ha, is it's going too slowly, it feels like it will never end to drag on. So um, in your new, course packet. I'll give you maybe five or ten minutes to read the story, The Ugly Duckling. I think you already know the story, so it should be very easy. So just don't read every word. Just kind of skip around, skim it, scan it, and I'll give you maybe five minutes to read the story, The Ugly Duckling, which is in the middle of the uh, course book. So um, the questions are right here on the paper. So um, the first question, um, what is the main character's struggle in the story? How is it parallel to a struggle of your own? So what does this mean, parallel? Uh, two lines never meet in mathematics, but here, here's the story and here's your own life. What does it mean by how is the character's struggle parallel to your own? Yeah, so in other words, um, the swan's struggle is people think he's an ugly duckling. What is your struggle? And what happened? How did it end? Was it solved like this one? So in other words, how is this story similar to your own personal story? And like we said, everybody, everybody has struggles. It doesn't matter how popular or special or rich you are. Everybody has struggles. Uh, even Egon He has struggles. Uh, everybody does. And then um, T-U-D means the ugly duckling. It's not Tud, but the ugly duckling. So um, said, second question is easy to understand. Um, what is the moral? So I said, some stories like Hungbu and Nolbu, they have a moral. They tell you, you should do this, you should not do that. Like uh, Hungbu and Nolbu, it says, be a kind person, be honest, and be good to your family. That's the moral of that story. Um, how about the story of the tortoise and the hare? the rabbit and the turtle. The rabbit is fast, but he's lazy. The turtle is slow and kind of stupid, but he works hard. So the rabbit and turtle, tortoise and hare, what's the moral of that story? Let's see, so when you were probably four or five, you heard this story many times. Now we've reread it. Now you're an adult, you're much older. So maybe you have a better vision better understanding of what is the story. So now you have to think about it a little bit. Is it a good story for children? Is it not a good story? I don't know. And how can you criticize the story? It's not perfect, um, but what is good or what is bad about the story? Criticism is usually negative. It can be positive too. And the next one, uh, if you had a child, 
would you read the story to your child? Maybe yes, maybe no. Why is that? And um, we'll do this last one, make your own ending to the story. But um, a couple things. We'll do this by contest. If you can answer my question in your group, you get to choose which version you want to do. And um, sad ending, uh, we can understand. How about horrible? What is meant by a horrible ending? Um, yeah, for example, okay, okay, yeah. So horrible, it just means bad or terrible or miserable, very negative, that's all that means. And then creepy. Creepy is if you see something scary or a little bit disgusting, ooh, like this one, ooh, that's gross, uh, creepy. And surprise ending, um, you don't know, you don't expect. Suddenly, you, huh, you get this weird ending, strange, uh, WTF, do we know what that means, WTF? What the, mm, uh, it, means, <clears throat> it means kind of shocking, really bizarre, really strange, unexpected, and then funny, uh, kind of happy, it makes you laugh, like this one. So uh, each group, if you can answer my question, raise your hand. Uh, in many stories, there's a prince, for example, in Cinderella, um, there's the prince, and he rescues Cinderella from a terrible life, in a lot of these stories, the prince has the same name. What is the name of the prince? We say Prince mm -mm -mm Ing. Prince Charming. Prince Charming. Okay, good. So this group you got answered first. So which one of these endings does this group want to choose? Just think about it for a minute. Okay, they'll be the first. And the second question is, um, there's a famous story, a grim story of uh, a princess. She has a bad time and then she's making thread from cotton, she pricks her finger, and then she falls asleep. So, Sleeping Beauty, that's good. So this group, you can choose the second one, uh, the second one of these, and we'll have the next three groups. Um, you'll get to choose this one. Um, there's a story of uh, Shim Chung and her father Shim Bong Sa, and at the end of the story, she jumps into the water, she turns into a flower, what kind? Of flower does she turn into? Okay, that's right. So in English, it's also a kind of sports car, luxury sports car. Uh -huh. That's right. It's a lotus. She turns into a lotus or a lotus blossom. Three, and we have one more question between the, the two groups, um, a children's story. Okay, so uh, in the story of King Arthur, Arthur, he's just a helper. He's not a real knight. And then he goes, he pulls the sword from the stone and he becomes the king. What is the name of the sword? Excalibur. Excalibur. Okay, so this group, so this group is last. So, um, so which group was first? You guys were first. So which ending do you want? Surprise ending, okay. And what story, what ending does this group want? Surprise? Creepy. creepy. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, creepy ending. You guys are creepy. And you guys were third. Which ending do you want? Horrible, really a horrible ending. You guys don't look horrible. They look very nice, okay. And then this group, which ending do you want? The, okay, the WT, what the mm ending. Okay, and finally, which, which ending do you guys want? Alternative ending. So what's left? Okay, so um, let's see. Sad is not taken, I think. Um, let's see, surprise, wait, let's do this one more time. They weren't paying attention, so you guys are. Surprising, taken, surprise ending taken. Creepy, creepy, taken, what the mm taken, and horrible, taken, so um, what's left, funny is left, um, let's see, I think sad is left, so you can choose one of those endings. So in your group, uh, you can answer these questions for about five minutes, uh, five or ten minutes, then after that, you can work on an alternative ending of the story. So first do the discussion questions together. After five or ten minutes, you can make your alternative ending to the story. Uh, got it? Okay, yeah, so he's saying that the swan is passive. Oh, I'm different. I'm a victim. He doesn't try hard. He just, oh, poor me. Oh, my life is so hard. Oh, they treat me badly. He doesn't try. That's interesting. So I think that's, that can be an uh, interesting message to you. Anything else? Anything about social class?
No, so um, in the end, the swan, is he uh, successful or a failure? And then why? Why is that? Because he's beautiful. He's beautiful because he's a swan, but was he born a swan or does he become a swan? Born. So what message could this send us? It, it says it doesn't matter how much you try or what you do, it's how you're born, where you're born in society. That can also be very negative. Uh, if you're poor, you're going to be poor. If you're born rich, you'll be rich. So that's possible. But anyway, uh, what we'll do is each group, you can uh, work on your alternative ending. Just a simple half a page, something like that. And uh, after the group is finished, one person from each group can stand up and read their alternative ending. So plan, so I'll give you about uh, five or ten minutes to develop your ending. This group is already got their very creepy ending. <laughs> Surprise ending. I remember on Sunday night, maybe it was like five years ago when you were in uh, probably middle school. Oh. Okay, one more time. Let's go. Rob. Right, okay, yeah, so yeah, that sounds very, quite horrible. Uh, horrible doesn't have to be the same as horror, just bad, unhappy, kind of miserable. So yeah, that sounds pretty bad. That's, that, that'll work, uh huh? Jeez, okay. yeah, that's, that's, yeah, I think that's okay, that's pretty horrible. So um, you'll have to rewrite the ending as a story. So after this, the, he discovered he was a swan, and then something like that, uh huh? So just about four sentences. So you guys have the WTF? No, no, no. Sad, okay, right. Uh, yeah, you can do that. It's the same thing. It'll just be the ending, so that's okay. Uh -huh. And it could be a little bit sad, as in, uh, or something very sad. It's, uh, it's up to you. Yeah, it's your interpretation. <laughs> Closing his eyes. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay, that's good. Okay. And you guys have the WTF. Okay, so that means it could be weird, disgusting, shocking. It could be anything. It just has to be kind of out of the box. You get to, oh my, what? Oh, geez, God, like that one. So it could be, it could even be happy. You just don't know what to expect. Yeah. Okay, um, so which group wants to read their ending first? Any volunteers? You guys want to go first? Okay. And then this group, which ending are you doing? We're doing the sad version. Sad version. Okay. So this group is going to do the sad version. So when you're ready, um, one person will read. Other people try to listen pretty well. And um, should the, do you want to stand up or just sit? Whatever you want to do is okay. Standing or sitting, whatever is comfortable. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So sad ending. He was happy at last as they all flew off together. He was so happy that he closed his eyes and enjoyed the wind to touch his feathers. When he opened his eyes, the other swans were nowhere to be seen. In fact, the other swans were jealous of the ugly duckling's beauty. How dare he mingle with us? So when the ugly duckling closed his eyes, they all left him behind and flew away into a different direction. Suddenly, an airplane appeared in front of the ugly duckling. The ugly duckling was sucked into the propeller and was carried into pieces. The ducklings in the pond saw this and crackled with laughter all day long. Okay. <laughs> that's it. Wow, that's pretty sad. Wow, that was good. Okay, good. Um, does anybody want to go next? Or you guys want to choose uh, who to go next? You just point. Then you go. These go okay, good. Okay. So and you guys are doing the WTF, the what the ending? Okay. So this is the what the F ending. So you guys, uh, when you're ready, go ahead. So the... The green ran away from the dogs. He was so lonely that he started to take drag. He started with marijuana, <laughs> <laughs> ended up with heroin. <laughs> One day, a obsession was passing by and saw the ugly duckling. The obsession heard his story and taught the duckling Assassination skills. <laughs> the duckling killed the duck family. And finally, and died because of avian influence. <laughs> okay, and that's the end. Yeah, that, 
I wasn't expecting that. That is a twist that I knew. Okay, good. And then uh, you guys can choose who shall go next between three groups that are left. Oh, you guys want to go next? Yeah. Okay, yeah, go ahead. All right. So this ending is the creepy story. This is the creepy ending. Okay. As soon as he grew up, when he was capable of flying, he came back to Duck Lake. And he became gigantic and muscular swan. <laughs> First, he hid and wait for running. And then, it was time. When the moon came up, he waited in deep black cover. And then, when the dog approached the swan, he kidnapped the dogs one by one, taking them to unknown prison. When, when the dogs opened their eyes, they see the playing video. In the video, the swan said, Hello, my brother dogs. Let the game begin. <laughs> you are so arrogant, rude, and teased me. So I'll give you a lecture. There is a one key for escape. But to get the key, you have to pass the water pipe. It's about 10 kilometers. <laughs> the game starts. <laughs> oh, that's it. Okay. Oh, so it's uh, open ending. Okay, that's good. That's good. Okay. And uh, let's see, which group is going to go next? Oh, you guys want to go next? And which ending is the... Horrible, okay, the horrible ending, okay. Was happy at last as they all flew off together. However, he got caught in an electrical wire. He got roasted after a minor taste of happiness. People thought the duckling was a turkey and ate him for Thanksgiving. Day. <laughs> okay, good, so he fell into the electrical wire. He got cooked and eaten. Okay, so yeah, that's, that's, that's horrible, okay. And finally, this group, uh, which ending did you guys have? The surprise ending, okay, so when you're ready, go ahead. Then so the pond freezes and he's kind of cold. So, um, so he has he has no food and he has nowhere to go. So he breaks the ice, goes into the water. Oh, he didn't know that um, he could dive in and swim in the water. So he swims and swims for days and sometimes coming up for air. And then so he swims, he eats food, fishes, and all that. And then one day um, he breaks the ice and then comes up to the air, <coughs> comes up to the air, and then. He looks around and then there are all these penguins. <laughs> and then so um and then those penguins said, Hey, why don't you come join us? And then so, hey, what what do you mean? I mean I mean I'm only an ugly duckling. Then look at yourself, you're a penguin. <laughs> 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 he looks at himself and then oh he's very happy that he's a penguin and he he's around with all his friends so and he and joins the others and that's the end of the story. Okay, so all along he was really a penguin. Oh, that's good. Okay, good, good. So, you guys are really weird. Uh, what, what kind of childhood did you have? It was miserable. You guys are quite dark. Okay, so uh, what we'll do is this one. Next week uh, for homework, we'll read The Selkie Wife. And then that's uh, Selkie, not Seki. That's Selkie. And let me explain. Uh, this is an Irish kind of, it's like a monster but not scary. Um, it's a seal that sometimes turns into a person. So basically, it's kind of a werewolf, but it turns into a seal. Not dangerous. In fact, it's very nice. And then the story is from Ireland. So we can say this word is Celtic or Celtic, both pronunciation coming from Scotland or Ireland. And then if I talk about Ireland, um, usually we think the Irish people, they have a kind of tragic, a little bit sad history, kind of melancholy people, but very emotional, especially kind of very sad, unhappy, uh, sometimes angry. So the Irish people are very emotional, very passionate, kind of a, a little bit sad, a little bit melancholy. So knowing this will uh, help you understand the story. For, so for next week, uh, we can read this one. We'll talk about it in class and Usually I do PowerPoint. Today we did our questions on paper. Um, do you like the paper better or just PowerPoint? Paper. Okay, so next week I'll make another sheet. So uh, let's finish for today. I'll see you guys next week. If you are late, please tell me so I can mark you as late. Okay, so I think it's a... It's a